My name is Kevin Smith. I'm 40 years old and I've been married to my wife Margaret, also 40, for 18 years. The first eight years of our marriage were great, sex five times a week, lots of erotic trips together, etc. Then, Margaret got into politics, especially in the last two years. It became clear that me and sex were far behind politics on her list of priorities. I turned into a horny dude, and my gaze began to wander, especially after she announced herself as the Democratic candidate for lieutenant governor of Virginia. Her opponent, the Republican candidate, was Brian Jones, who was about 45 years old. We lived in Arlington, and he lived in a suburb of Alexandria. Brian and my wife had a very strained relationship, both were very ambitious, persistent, and sincere believers in the core principles of their parties. I, on the other hand, am only mildly interested in politics and, while I would never tell my wife this, I am actually an independent. Although the election was still a good seven months away, the League of Women Voters scheduled a Meet the Candidates event, not a real debate, but public speeches by the candidates for governor and lieutenant governor, and then a party where everyone could socialize. Of course, I was expected to attend, and I did. Fortunately, none of the spouses were introduced, and I was able to get lost in the crowd. That evening, while my wife was at the party, I noticed some woman glancing at me more than once. Although I didn't want to have an affair until after the election so as not to embarrass my wife, I was looking at potential candidates for the future. I appreciated her, she was a woman of large build, and I'm not using that as a euphemism for fat because she was definitely not fat, just large. I'd say about 175 centimeters tall, weighing 80 pounds, and probably a year or two older than me. She had a beautiful face, albeit with a little too much makeup. She also had huge breasts and a really awesome ass, big and round, both in size and shape. She was very different from my wife, who had small breasts and a flat ass. Although I had always liked big breasts and big round asses, I didn't pay attention to these flaws when I fell in love with my wife. I approached the big woman and introduced myself as Kevin, just Kevin. She introduced herself as Carol, just Carol. We started talking, maintaining eye contact except when our gazes wandered to different body parts. I was as kind, charming, and gentlemanly as I could be, and we talked and laughed for a good hour before the company began to disperse. Obviously, some kind of understanding had developed between us. When we both realized that the event was coming to an end, we both said we had to say goodbye. You know, I don't even know your last name. I'm Kevin Smith, I said. A puzzled expression appeared on her face, and she said, I'm Carol Jones. Is this your husband, Brian, the man who was running against my wife, Margaret, for lieutenant governor? I asked. She laughed and said, I think so, which caused me to laugh even harder. I don't know what came over me, but while we were laughing, I said, well, I don't know about Brian's political views, but at least he had the good sense to marry a charming woman with an A-plus ass. Right after I said that, I couldn't believe I'd done it. Carol's jaw dropped, and she blushed. I felt myself blushing too, and I was sure my jaw had dropped as well. I mumbled an apology, something like, oh god, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to offend anyone. Sometimes the filter between my brain and my mouth doesn't work right. Carol smiled at that and asked, does that mean you really think my ass is fine? Not knowing what else to say, I replied, actually, yes, but it was inappropriate of me to say that. At that moment, her husband, Brian, came over and introduced himself. He was clearly shocked to learn that I was Margaret's husband. As we parted, I smiled at Carol and said, it was very nice to meet you, to which she responded with a wide, genuine, helpful smile. For the next two days, not doing too well at multitasking, I thought about nothing but Carol's charming personality, her big bust, and especially her world-class ass. Amazingly, the next day I was even able to seduce my wife for the first time in a month and really slept with her. Then a plan matured in my little brain, if I had an affair with Carol, I wouldn't have to worry about it diminishing my wife's chances of being elected because if it became known, Brian would be just as hurt as my wife. So, a couple of days later, I called Carol. I invited her to lunch to apologize for my comment and also to try to see if we could find ways to convince our spouses to keep the campaign as positive as possible without personal attacks. 
She agreed, and I could hear the genuine excitement in her voice as she accepted my invitation. Maybe she thought of me as much as I thought of her. Carol greeted me warmly, smiled broadly, and gave me a hug when we met for lunch. She looked gorgeous, no makeup than when we first met, and in a more revealing outfit with a big cleavage. Her outfit fit her rounded ass so tightly that you could bounce a quarter off of it. While we talked a little about politics, I learned that she's also an independent. We mostly talked about personal things, like how difficult and lonely it is to be a candidate's spouse. Before we knew it, we had already talked for three hours. As we hugged each other to leave, Carol said with a mischievous expression on her face, this was very different from our first conversation, you didn't mention my ass once this time. I didn't seem to blush, but I took her comment calmly and quickly replied, that's because I've come to the conclusion that it's not just an A+, but a world-class ass. I would never want to risk embarrassing someone who was world-class at anything. That got her a laugh and another tight, stunning hug. As she turned and walked away, it was obvious she was waving the thing around as defiantly as she could. It was as if I was a trout and that ass was a baited hook. I'm hooked. I decided to find out as much about Carol as I could. I found out, for example, where Carol shopped and what she did, and ran into her at several stores and twice at the health club. We also checked to see what political events the candidates would be attending so that, supposedly, we wouldn't get bored because we could socialize with each other. I socialized with Carol at least four times a week, and we became really good friends. Despite her obvious attraction to me, I was very reluctant to approach Carol sexually for fear that I had misinterpreted something or that I would be rejected. I don't know how to handle rejection, I never have and probably never will. Then, about three months after we first met, a catastrophic event occurred. One of my wife's co-workers, I don't know if it was with my wife's knowledge or not, made a comment to the press about Carol's drinking problem about five years ago. It was a silly comment that had nothing to do with the campaign, but it was published in the local paper. Carol and I found out about it on the same day. I was furious. I called Carol, by then I had her cell phone number, but she didn't answer. I left her a message letting her know that I would take care of firing the person who made the comment, which I did despite my wife's reluctance. Since I didn't answer the phone, I apologized even though I had nothing to do with it, and asked her to call back. When she didn't call back the next morning either, I took the opportunity to go to her house. Carol opened the door crying when she saw it was me. She tried to close it. I wouldn't let her. I stormed inside. I begged her to believe that I knew nothing about this beforehand, that I had fired this man, and that I was truly sorry. We sat on the couch together, and she continued to sob, saying that the hardest thing she had to do in her life was to overcome her alcohol addiction, that she had tried her hardest to put it behind her, and that it was very painful for her to remember it, especially in a situation like this. She looked so innocent, so vulnerable, so tender, so sensitive that I couldn't help myself. I kissed her gently on the lips, needing no resistance. I continued kissing her for a good two minutes. When I finally pulled away from her lips, there were no more tears in her eyes, and she smiled crookedly. I told her, I really hate to see someone I love suffer. Did I just say that? What the hell am I doing? I said to myself. Carol looked surprised for a few seconds and then seriously replied, you just said you love me. Are you just saying that to cheer me up, or is it another case of not having a filter between your brain and your mouth? I embarrassedly replied, obviously my brain-to-mouth filter doesn't work in your presence. That was true, but I didn't want to say it. That moment changed everything. Before I could do or say anything, she pounced on me like a fly-on. She ran her hands all over my body, showering me with voluptuous kisses. After a few minutes, she removed her top and bra, reaching for my pants. Of course, I was only too happy to do so. She said, slightly, you can't wait to try it, can you? Let's go somewhere more comfortable. With those words, she stood up, grabbed my hand, and led me away. I stopped her, picked her up in my arms, it wasn't easy, but I'm a big guy and lift weights every other day, and said, I'm Tarzan, and you're Jane. Tarzan take Jane to bed and then give Jane a good time, eliciting a laugh from Carol as she pointed the way to her bedroom. 
Fortunately, it was on the second floor, carrying her up the stairs might have been really difficult. After our almost simultaneous violent ecstasies, we lay side by side. It must have been about 15 minutes before we spoke to each other. Carol spoke first, wow, that was probably the best sex I've had in a long time. Then we kissed, showered together, got dressed, and sat at the kitchen table eating a sandwich each and drinking a soft drink. Between bites, Carol asked, what are we going to do next? I swallowed, took her hand, and said, you and I are more suited for each other than any other woman in my life. Absolutely, let's have sex almost every day for the entire campaign, and then we'll divorce and get married. Without taking a bite out of her sandwich, she replied nonchalantly, I think that's a good plan. In fact, that's exactly what we did. Since our spouses were on the campaign trail every day, seven days a week, and at least five nights a week, we had a four-month feast of cheating with Carol. I had no problem doing it twice almost every day, six days a week, as she could stand it. We really were much more compatible, both sexually and personally, with each other than we had been with our spouses for at least ten years, maybe ever. We waited a decent two weeks, probably not enough, but we didn't care. After the campaign ended, before telling our spouses that we were divorcing them and moving to live together, a few months later that same week, our divorces became final. That weekend, we flew to Las Vegas and got married. To say that we have been amazingly happy and sexually fulfilled since then would be a huge understatement. As for the election, I voted for Brian, and Carol voted for Margaret. It was the least we could do for them.